patches in your stanchions are not only really annoying to look at, but they might actually damage your seals and this could limit the life or the reliability of your forks. But don't worry, it's a relatively easy fix and I'm going to show you how. So I've got myself a pre-existing scratch repair kit because buying all of the items new seem to be about the same price for me. So this is just easier and slightly more affordable, but you might have all of these bits at home. So this is what you'll need. A 140 grit file, two to one ratio of resin to hardener, a mixer tube with measurements on it, sandpaper, preferably 150 grit or more, a sanding wedge, a pipette or a clean nail varnish brush, cleaning wipes or isopropyl alcohol and a towel, a pair of nitrile gloves, wet lube and some silicon spray or some suspension oil like Fox Float Fluid just to finish off. Now you can see the scratch on my stanchions here because obviously I've got a gold cashmere coating and you can see the silver underneath. Now what's key here is you need to be able to feel it with your finger, maybe even run your nail over it and if it gets caught, that is what we need to repair. If it's quite smooth, you might be able to just get away with running that. But the bit we're gonna focus on is the bit that we catch. Now we're gonna use our 140 file here and we're gonna use a bit of wet lube as well to aid with uh, smoothing the action of the filing. But I think it's really key to point out that we're only gonna file down any burrs, any edges that are raised. We don't want to file the scratch, we don't want to file in a flat spot, we don't want to go down past the level of the stanchions. So this bit here doesn't catch my nail at all, so I don't think we need to file that. But this one here does have an edge that needs a little bit of attention. So we're going to use our file on just this bit. And I'm going to get the wet lube and just pop a little amount on there. Move it around. And that's just going to help us find the friction with our file. So you can feel that it's nice and smooth, but it catches here. So that's the bit we want to focus on. Now we're just going to use really gentle pressure. In fact, no pressure at all, just rubbing on the bit that gives us friction. And we're going to come at it from a few different angles. And also just keep checking with your finger to see if it still catches. So that's stopped catching on my nail now. So I think we're ready to go to the resin. So we just need to clean this off with an alcohol wipe or some isopropyl alcohol. So now it's time to shake up your epoxy resin and your hardener. And this is a two to one ratio. I'm gonna use one mil of epoxy resin in my pipette, which has measurements to 0.5 mil of hardener. So you'll put one mil in and then another 0.5 taking it up to a 1.5 in total. You should have your gloves on by now if you haven't already. And then we're gonna get a stirrer or a pipette and you ideally need to stir this for about three minutes. Now you can see there's air bubbles in there. Three minutes is to make sure there is no air bubbles in there whatsoever and you might have to change direction and use some different actions to get those bubbles to come out. Okay, three minutes later, that's looking pretty smooth and all the big bubbles are gone so that we've got a nice amount of resin in our pipette or if you're using a nail varnish brush. And it's time to put this into the scratch. I'm applying the resin as minimally as possible. So I want it over this scratch you don't want a big patch of it because you don't want to be sanding away a big patch later. So let that set with the scratch facing upwards so it doesn't dribble down and out of your scratch. And you want to leave that for about six to eight hours. 
If you're in a cold garage, it might even be longer, so perhaps leave it overnight. If you want to speed it up, then leave it in the light or get it near a heat source. Uh, but you will know it's done because if you put a nail into it, your fingernail, then it won't leave a dent. And that's when you know it's hard and ready to work with. So I've left my epoxy resin to harden overnight and now I can dig my nail into it and it is rock solid. There's no indent made. So we're ready to sand this. Now I've got my 150 grit sandpaper or emery paper and my dedicated kit has given me a soft piece of foam like a pad to put my sanding paper on. Now if you've not bought a kit, I would recommend making something like this for your sandpaper to go around. It's got a nice rounded edge and a pointy edge so that you can be really precise on getting the resin. You do not want to be sanding your stanchion at all if you can help it. And a bit of flat paper might just curve around too much if it's in your hands. So what we wanna do is just get a nice cup of water and get some water on the stanchion over the resin so that we can begin a bit of wet and dry sand. So as you sand it, just do a little bit at a time and you can see some of the white liquid or some of the uh, sanding of the resin will come out in the water. So you can do a little bit, move it away and check you're still rubbing away resin and not your stanchion. Now keep wiping away that white and just remember to come in at different directions maybe some circular, don't keep it too linear. Try and concentrate on the resin and check it regularly. You don't want to go past the resin. So I've got it down nice and smooth and I'm happy with that. And what you're looking for in the outset is something that is smooth. It has no edges that's going to be catching or damaging your seals. And you don't want any crevices or scratches that are going to hold water or mud and draw that into your forks because that's just going to ruin the life and the performance of your fork. So once you are happy that you've got to that stage and it's nice and smooth, then you just want to clean off any debris, any of that sandpaper or resin that you've got left over. You can blast it away with some disc cleaner if you have some. This is safe on seals, so it's good to use here. Uh, or perhaps isopropyl alcohol with a rag and just get rid of any residue left over or any sanding paper that's left over. And then what I would do to finish that off is to add some perhaps uh, silicon spray or even better would be some suspension oil just around the edges and give your forks a good few compression strokes to sort of draw it back into the seals and lubricate the shafts and then just wipe that excess off with your blue rag and you should be good to go. So hopefully that's helped you out. If you've ever used this fix before, let me know how it went down in the comments below. Or if you think you will give this a go, then also let me know down in the comments below and give us a big old thumbs up for more content like this in the future.